Ah, <sighs> that's a bit underwhelming. Oh, ahoy! Now I know what you're thinking, the everyday hassle of a temple collapsing on you for a PlayStation 4? Really? See, for the PS5, that's understandable, but for this last-gen dusty console? Well, the answer is yes, because this isn't any ordinary PlayStation 4. Back in August of 2014, a free game titled PT mysteriously hit the PlayStation Store without any announcement. As people checked it out, they discovered that it was a horror game that had you go through looping haunted hallways that seemed to never end. It was shown to be made by 7780 Studio, which is a completely unknown game developer, and clattered the game with even more mystery. This already sounds like an opening to a classic creepypasta. Ooh, I found this spooky disc in a spooky place and decided to play it and saw a bunch of spooky images and what the fuck I died? PT became very popular amongst the horror community for how dark and cryptic it was, and after beating PT, the curtain is fully unveiled. It shows us that the true masterminds behind this are Konami, Hideo Kojima, and Spanish filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. It also tells us that what we just played was a playable teaser for an upcoming game called Silent Hills, and what really set the internet ablaze was, wait for it, there it is! Now Norman Reedus was hot. He still is. But back in 2014, The Walking Dead was arguably at its peak in popularity, and the badass redneck stud muffin Daryl Dixon was really adored. And the announcement that Norman Reedus was going to be starring in a new installment into a beloved horror franchise made by Hideo Kojima was just super exciting and really lured people in. I was never a fan of Silent Hill, but I was a fan of The Walking Dead and I was super looking forward to this. Damn it. In March of 2015, Silent Hills ended up getting cancelled after a falling out between Konami and Kojima, leading him to leaving the company. This really went on to upset everybody, and fans even started online petitions to have the game's development continued, but it was no use. PT would become the closest anybody would ever get to Silent Hills, so Konami decided to at the very least let people have that. <laughs> what am I saying? No they didn't. A month after Silent Hills was binned, Konami tried to take the demo with it and pull PT from the PlayStation Network, making it impossible for anyone to download, which really pissed off everybody. However, anyone who still had the game downloaded onto their PS4 still had access to it, which led to PT becoming a rare game, and PlayStation 4 consoles that had it installed were suddenly prized treasures that people start to sell online for quite the markup. Which is what we have here. I managed to get my hands on this PS4 that has PT still installed, and I just had to make a video on it. I've never played PT before, and I'm really excited to dive in because not a lot of people have access to this, so this is exciting. Again, it is only a demo, so this should be a quick and easy playthrough. When turning on PT, I started by waking up in this concrete room, and as I walked towards the door, I entered this red hallway. I progressed through the end of this L-shaped path, and then I ended up back from where I started, but now things are even more red, our movement is rapid, and we are in a constant loop of hallways where there's a bunch of eyeballs. I tried to look around for something to cue me on what I'm supposed to do, but nothing really happened. After 15 minutes, I just opted to look up online how to stop the red, and it guided me to this random peephole here. How was I supposed to see that? Anyway, we hear some creepy stuff and then I'm drawn into this bathroom where I see a nasty talking fetus and when it stops, I walk down the hallway and see the red finally end. The room seems set and I try to look around for something but the screen starts to glitch out on me, gives me error text, and apparently resets itself as I see the fake studio name before reawakening in the cement room. Now I think that was cool, the game trying to be meta and breaking the fourth wall. It kind of reminded me of how in Five Nights at Freddy's, the Golden Freddy would just crash the game. I re-entered the same hallway, but now it's completely dark, and after roaming around this hallway for 15 minutes, I saw that this wasn't going to work. I called upon a buddy of mine who's a PT enthusiast to come and hold my hand through the process. His name was Crowboy, and a big shout out to him for making this video possible. He informed me that I jumped into an ongoing game and had to hop into a new profile to start from the beginning. Yeah, PT doesn't really have a menu, it just throws you into the game, and if it's a previously played game, you're getting dropped off at the last save point. Pressing the start button only takes you to a menu where you adjust brightness and select your language, so that's a bit annoying in case you ever want to reset mid-game. So with the help of my new Navi per se, I get a bit more of an understanding on what PT is. The gameplay of PT is all about this L-shaped hallway that constantly loops itself. The objective is to uncover and solve a very enigmatic and cryptic puzzle that allows us to progress to the next cycle and deal with the supernatural occurrences. 
The story here is that one day a father goes mad and kills his entire family. Ah, oh, bummer. And we are now trapped in the house where presumably the events took place. From here, there are numerous theories taking off about who we, Norman Reedus, whose reflection you can barely, just barely, see in the bathroom mirror, are and what precisely is going on. Some say we are just some random guy trapped in this haunted house dealing with the evil spirit. Other fan theories speculate that we are the father who committed the murders and the endless walk through the hallway is us losing our mind about it. PT is a psychological horror game which is done beautifully with this weirdly laid out hallway that gives off a feeling of claustrophobia and the one sharp turn in the middle of it that leaves a feeling of anguish on if and what is going to be around the corner. The threat that we have in this game is the presumed ghost of the murdered wife named Lisa who pops up a couple times and even apparently goes after you. But the game doesn't really go all survival horror on us, instead it's not often at all that she appears to try to kill the player. She can only be triggered by sharp 180 degree turns, but even then when we spent a few minutes going up and down the halls trying to trigger Lisa, it took a bit of time to finally see her. Even then, dying just gives you a not too bad of a jump scare and sends you back to the concrete room to reset the loop you're already in. But it's not an active annoying presence, so really it's all about just trying to solve these puzzles. Crowboy started to walk me through the game and to complete the first loop all you had to do was apparently just listen to the radio station talking about the terrible crime that took place. In the next loop he had us search the hallway for 6 pieces of a picture on the wall and boy oh boy were some of these a pain to find. Kojima is a game developer that is well regarded for his outside the box approach to creating games. I mean he's the mind behind the Metal Gear franchise, a series of games that to break down just an hour of the game would require an entire video based on how insane and convoluted the whole thing is yet still somehow makes perfect sense. Kojima knows that filling a game with secrets and mysteries is not easy this day and age with how the internet is. People will quickly uncover them, post them on YouTube shorts, and now everybody knows about it. So Kojima's response to that with PT, a game that's supposed to be all about secrets and puzzle solving, was to make solving these puzzles as insanely difficult as possible. Let's take this picture puzzle for example. Six pieces to find and three of them weren't too bad, just look around the ground in some clutter ridden places, but the last three, holy sh**. Crowboy knew where two of these crazy pieces were, one was located behind the stairs before the hallway ends, and another one was stuck to the ceiling, which is about some C tier level bullshit. The last piece he didn't even know and we did an online internet search and discovered that it was actually located in the pause menu, Kojima you son of a bitch. After assembling the photo, we progress through the loops and the game starts to turn up the creep factor with bloody refrigerators hanging from the ceiling, roaches all around, the radio becomes erratic, writings appear on the wall, some Lisa cameos, and a random window jump scare for no reason other than me to sh** myself to. Outstanding. So we finally end up reaching the final sequence of the demo. The last loop you solve, which fans online will go on to dub the unsolvable puzzle. Great. So PT is a game that is about 20 minutes long, but the way everything is mysterious coupled with the complete bizarreness of the final puzzle can stretch this out to being hours and hours of playtime just trying to beat it once. The whole point of this final loop is to try to trigger three baby cries and while everyone was able to figure out how to get the first one by simply walking 10 steps in any direction immediately after the clock strikes midnight, the second baby cry is what makes PT almost impossible. You will find so many methods online on how to trigger it. Some say you have to walk to a particular picture and stare at it long enough. Some say you must run back and forth between the phone and the radio. Others say you need to summon Lisa and start talking to her using the PlayStation microphone trying to calm her down and I'm not joking when I say that. You died. Get over it. But now this starts to bring up the question on whether or not PT is good game design. Listen, any game that leaves players dependent on the internet to make any progression throughout is not a well made game. And when I first started PT blindly, I was not enjoying it. The lack of direction and confusion throughout made this a bit of a cumbersome experience that really turned me off and even made me hate the color red. But in all fairness, I was unknowingly dropped into an ongoing game that was up to the unsolvable puzzle, so you know what, my assessment is compromised. But even when Crowboy joined the party and started to guide me through the whole game, it still didn't feel like I was beating the game. I was being straight up guided through the game by someone who said PT is one of his favorite gaming experiences. Would this have been possible without that? I'm not sure. But surprisingly, what changed my opinion was the unsolvable puzzle. Crowboy had never solved the final loop before, so we started to look online and pulling from articles and forums methods people used and put them to the test and when it doesn't work we try something else. And if I'm being totally honest, this was actually a really enjoyable process. It had a very fun adventuresque vibe to it like when an explorer would gather info from ancient writings to find lost civilizations or how a detective would piece together the crime using clues. 
The sense of community from online fans sharing their intel and discoveries was really nice to stumble into, and god damn it, Kojima is a brilliant bastard. He turned bad game design into a really unique experience. Anyway, so it became clear to us to BPT we needed to use a PlayStation mic. I don't have one, so thankfully the mic I used for my video sufficed. But what we had to do with it started to vary from internet source to internet source. With some people claiming you had to directly talk to Lisa, and others saying you had to say a bunch of letters that start with J, or for some reason the name Jareth or Jared. Some say we had to say it repeatedly, others said we just had to continuously say the letter J in 3 second intervals. How the f*** did anyone figure this out? What we got was to wait for the clock to strike midnight, and then wait until both the gongs and Lisa's noise indicator ended, walk the 10 paces and suddenly halt, hear the first baby's cries, stand absolutely still and wait until the second Lisa noise indicator starts, and then, at the precise moment during the soundbite when her breathing stops, but before the static ends, we proceed to throw Jays at the mic in 3 second intervals until we finally hear that second baby cry. <laughs> and once we heard it, it felt intense. Like you opened a long sealed door to a treasure, or walked in on your toaster f***ing your waffle maker. After the second baby's cries, the player needs to hold absolutely still, not make a sound, and then the controller starts vibrating and you must continue to hold still. And Jesus Christ, holding the controller as it vibrated felt nuts. I will one day be a father and have to hold my child for the first time in my hands and it still probably won't feel as magical as this. The vibration ends, the third baby cries, signaling that we did it. We hear a phone ring, we answer it, it tells us that we've been chosen, and then we hear the door unlock, letting us know that we can leave. I will say I was under the impression that this door on the left was going to be the one that opens and let us leave, which would have felt really cool seeing a door open that you're so used to seeing closed. But no, we leave through the door at the end of the hallway that we always use and see some dialogue of the ghost of the murdered child talking about his father and how he was going to be back. Oh, he would have thought. And then the game plays the teaser for Silent Hills, which turns that feeling of joy from beating the game into a bit of sadness as we are reminded of what could have been. PT is considered the greatest video game demo of all time, and even at some point was regarded as the greatest horror game out there that people still to this day talk about passionately. Now do I think the game is worth spending the amount of money that can be used to buy a PlayStation 5? No. Because... It can be hit or miss whether or not you like it. But if you do ever manage to come across a PlayStation 4 that has PT installed in it, then I do highly recommend giving it a go because it could be a really good time, especially if you bring a friend on board with you. Which I think is the best way to experience PT. When you have company with you, it kind of becomes like an escape room where you guys put your collective minds together to get through it. So that's my assessment. P.T. is a great multiplayer game. Now what happened after P.T. was pulled? Well, Kojima went on to form his own game studio and eventually reunited with Ritas and Del Toro in 2019 and released Death Stranding. Konami, on the other hand, continues its best to keep P.T. buried by removing any fan attempts to recreate the game and even blocking players' ability to transfer their P.T. data from the PS4 to the PS5. It's a real garbage thing how Konami is treating its fans, especially of their own product. But this is overall is going to be the problem with the digital age of gaming. It is so easy for these digital only games to be lost to time, especially PT who has Konami actively trying to kill it. The preservation of these consoles that still have these games installed is super important and I'm happy to do my part. I am going to find a safe place to keep this PlayStation 4. Yeah! <laughs>